What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to learn how to build a stretchy header in Swift UI. So here is the app we're going to put together. We've got this header and you can see as we scroll down, we get this stretchy effect. Uh, if you haven't seen it already in some other popular apps, and we'll also go ahead and make this UI somewhat nice to get a real world example. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you start by absolutely destroying the like button down below. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel and uh, haven't done so already. If you're into iOS or Swift, you can stick around. That all said, let's get into the video. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're gonna stick with the app template under iOS. Let's go ahead and call this a uh, stretchy header Swift UI. Make sure your language is set to Swift and your interface is Swift UI. Go ahead and continue. Save the project wherever you'd like. I'll toss it onto my desktop here. And first things first, we're gonna go ahead and close this right panel. I'm gonna pick a different preview device since nobody likes the iPod Touch. We'll go with the 12 Pro Max here. We'll hit resume to load up our preview. And while that's actually loading, I've got a batch of a couple of images here if we can uh, open up this folder so we're just going to drag this into our xe assets it's just some app icons and a poster image so let's go ahead and jump into our xe assets here i'm just going to open this on up and we'll go ahead and drag all of these in for today's video just like that and uh, we can jump back into our content view so the first thing that we want to do is actually create the UI that you saw in the beginning with, uh, you know, like a poster at the top and a list of applications. And then we'll go ahead and make the poster at the top, the poster image stretchy. So let's get to it. So first things first, we want a scroll view in here. We want it to definitely be vertical. And once we've got that scroll view, we then inside here want a vertical stack. The vertical stack will hold our poster or header image up here. And then we want another vertical stack where we can do a for each loop over our pieces of data and create our card views. So let's go ahead and do that. So we want some data to represent, uh, you know, each of those uh, cards for each app. So we'll go ahead and say this is a card data. Now a card data will basically have a ID, which is going to be an integer. Uh, it'll also go, have, uh, go ahead and have a title, so we'll go ahead and say title. I'm not going to make this too crazy for the sake of time. So let's see, now that we've got that, what else do we need to do? We need to do a for each over, and we're going to go from 1 up until 5, where the ID is going to be self, and here we'll say num in. That allows us to go ahead and uh, create one of these uh, card pieces of data. So we'll say data is a card data struct. The ID will be the number. And let's just go ahead and uh, add in some dummy text for now. We'll go ahead and hook this up to better text in a moment. And now that we've got our card data, let's go ahead and create a single card view. So I'm going to do that down here. We'll go ahead and create a card view, which is going to extend view. Every Swift UI view needs a body, so we'll have that. And essentially what we want in here is a horizontal stack and our stack is going to basically have a image which is going to have a aspect ratio. So let's go ahead and say aspect ratio and this guy is going to be to fit. We'll also go ahead and give this a corner radius of perhaps uh, eight. And then right next to that, we're going to want a title. So we'll go ahead and say add a title and then we want a spacer. And now let's just see what that looks like. Now we also want to, of course, pass in our data here. So we'll say data is going to be our card data. And our card data has some information on it. So the first thing we can do here is use that information to pull out uh, the ID, which is uh, tied to how our uh, image name works. And then instead of Facebook here, we can go ahead and say data.title. And now in here, we can go ahead and say, give me a card view with the appropriate uh, data, and we can pass in data just like that. So before we actually run it again in our uh, preview on the right-hand side, let's go ahead and add that poster image as well. So our image is called poster, and we're just gonna make sure that it's resizable. And we're also gonna give it a fixed frame height just to get started before we get into the stretchy behavior. We're gonna say this is the screen main 
main bounds. We're gonna grab the height and divide it by 2.2. Go ahead and hit resume the right hand side and what you'll see is hopefully once Xcode decides to cooperate we'll see an image up here and we'll start to see our uh, app icons down here. Now first and foremost our app icons are a little obnoxiously big uh, and we probably want to make this look a little bit nicer so let's go ahead and do that. So I'll also go ahead and uh, say the frame here has a fixed height of maybe 100 and a fixed width of 100 as well. So I think this one is width and this one is height just like that. And that'll make those guys smaller there hopefully. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of padding on each of these uh, card views. So everything is not you know touching one another and let's see what else we need to do we want to add the frame before we set the aspect ratio so nothing is cut off there let's see let's see let's go ahead and uh, hit the run button on the right hand side over here in our uh, canvas so we can see if we're able to scroll this uh, this guy so we should be able to scroll it but notice no stretchy header just quite yet so let's get uh, to doing that so we, uh, we still have our images actually cut off here, so one thing we could actually go ahead and do uh, is we can change uh, the frame and the aspect ratio. I'll actually leave it as is for a quick moment. The reason it's actually looking weird is because we didn't add the resizable modifier here. Once you add it, uh, everything will scale down appropriately. The corner radius uh, is not showing up for some reason, so let's see why that is as well. We'll go ahead and uh, you can hit the run button again, the left hand side, the right hand side I should say, and now we see our corner radius is showing up as well. So let's go ahead and style this up a little bit more. We've got bold here. I'm going to go ahead and also supply a font, which will be a system size, a system font of size I should say, perhaps 24. That'll make it nice and uh, large. And uh, the next thing we'll actually just do here, just to spruce it up a little bit, is go ahead and add a button here. We're not going to do anything in here, but we will go ahead in here and say this is get. We'll give it a foreground color of color dot blue, and we'll give it a background color of color dot secondary, perhaps. And we'll also go ahead and give it a nice frame, or we can give it maybe a little bit of padding instead. And we can go ahead and say corner radius is six. So we're attempting to make things look somewhat uh, appealing here. That uh, secondary looks a little ugly, so let's go ahead and see uh, what primary looks like. That also looks really ugly, so we are going to use a gray color. We're going to try uh, to use gray like 5 or 6 maybe. That will be a little lighter. Let's try gray 6 over here, system gray 6, and that looks just about correct. So now that we've got all of this working, let's jump into the stretchy header business. So it's pretty interesting and pretty simple how you accomplish this. So we have this uh, image up here, which is our header. Let's go ahead and just call this header right here so we're not confused. The first thing that we're going to want to go ahead and do is grab a geometry reader view. So this guy right here, the geometry reader takes in a proxy. I'm also going to take the frame here and uh, assign it on the actual geometry reader. And a geometry reader gives us relative positioning based on the entire view if we so choose to get it. So the first thing we're going to say is get the global frame, which is going to be proxy. And we're going to want to get the frame in the global coordinate space. And now that we have global here, we can use it to do different things. So the first thing we're going to do here is we are going to line break this so things are a little cleaner. And let me actually close this left panel so we have a little more room to write our code. And what we can do in here is use a ternary operator. We're going to go ahead and say on the global, if it's min y is greater than zero, do something. Uh, otherwise, do something else. So that's something that we're going to do is pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and uh, take this uh, default height and we're actually going to add to it the min y. So let's go ahead and actually give this a run in a simulator because it's a lot easier to test and see what the result is. Uh, we will need to do one more thing, but this will give us an interesting uh, starting point. So go ahead and uh, do that and let's see uh, once this guy loads up what effect that gives us. So stretchy headers look pretty cool in general and it's pretty it's a pretty big staple in a lot of big apps now so you probably want to add it to yours. Um, Alright, so if we scroll down you can see that it actually does stretch but we don't want it to move uh, down from the top. So we want this to be stuck to the top and stretch. You can see the stretch there, it's a little subtle but uh, you know it's definitely showing up. The other thing that I can see here is that the first app is actually overlapping. 
uh, the bottom of this uh, image. So we'll adjust that momentarily as well. So what else do we need to do here? Well, we're going to use the offset modifier and we're going to offset the Y coordinate based on the global dot min Y. So we can save global dot min min Y is greater than zero. We want to do something. Otherwise, the offset will be zero. What is the uh, first thing we're going to do here? Well, the offset will be negative global dot min Y. Hence, moving everything up so the stretchy behavior should look as expected. So now if we pull down, you can take a look that the offset is actually moving up as we are increasing in height. So you get the stretchy header effect. So let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit more. So first things first, um, let's go ahead and change the titles here for our actual apps to be the appropriate titles. So I'll go ahead and just create an array up here. This part is entirely subjective to your app. So let's go ahead and say uh, app names is going to be, and let's see if I remember all of these. So we'll go ahead and say, let's see, doodle jump, uh, subway surfers, doodle jump, and we want, that's not how we do an array. We want to put the comma there, subway surfers. This next one here is asphalt. Uh, racing, which I haven't played in actually many, many years at this point. I was going to say a couple of months, but it's been a long time. Then we have Super Mario, and we have uh, cut the rope down there. So we'll say Super Mario, and here we'll go ahead and say cut the rope. So now down here, we're creating our card data. Instead of using Facebook, we can say use self.appNames and just get the nth element out. And before we also go ahead and give this another run, we can go ahead and add a uh, subtitle right below this text. So let's go ahead and add a VStack. And we'll say the alignment in here is going to be leading. And we can go ahead and paste this in. And we'll paste in one more right below it. This one won't be bold. And the size of this one perhaps will be a little smaller. And we'll go ahead and say uh, offers in app purchases just so you get a little bit more uh, you know, stuff in your actual card view so it doesn't look so empty. Go ahead and give this a run and let's take a look at our final results. So you can see the Swift UI makes this stuff like super, super easy, um, which is really great. So let's see what's going on. So it looks like it's not able to actually find this and the reason is because we need to decrement one uh, because we are iterating from one to five and arrays are zero upwards. And now we can see we can stretch, we have our uh, you know, actual text here. We've got the subtitle there as well. And we can probably actually add a teensy tiny bit of padding to each of these to make sure that they're not so close to one another. So maybe three points would probably be good. And you can probably decrement this font size for the subtitle a little smaller too. At this point, I'm being nitpicky, but I think that looks a whole lot better. So there you have it. That's how you can create a stretchy header in your uh, SwiftUI application. The actual meat here is using a geometry reader to get the positioning of your view in the global coordinate space and then applying a offset and a height adjustment uh, as you go ahead and scroll because this whole guy is nested inside of a scroll view. So that's all I've got for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video and haven't done so already, make sure you destroy that like button down below. It helps out incredibly much, more than you guys can imagine. Hit subscribe while you're at it. Let's see if we can break uh, 26,000 today in terms of subs. And definitely don't forget to leave a comment down below if you have any questions, video suggestions, anything you guys want to share. I love hearing from you guys. I try to reply to every comment in somewhat of a reasonable time. So don't hesitate to ping me down below. So thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.